Hello YouTube. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about what is dynamic array and its implementation in Python. So this video will be in three sections. The first section, we're gonna talk about what is dynamic array and its main features. And the second section, we're gonna implement the dynamic array with Python. And in the third section, we're gonna do time and space analysis. An array is a continuous allocation of memory. So for example, we can have an array of length 5. So here we have an array of length 5, and then we can assign each slot in the array with a value. Like for example, we can have A, B, C, D, E in the arrays. And for dynamic array, which means the size of the array is not fixed, we can keep appending new elements in the array. So for example, for a dynamic array, we can have F appended in, the new, in this current array. So in order to create a dynamic array, what we, what we can do is we can have an array with empty elements. For example, length 4. And then we can say, right now we have a dynamic array with capacity of 4. But the size is 0. And then we can append an element in the array. And now the size is 1. And we can append a new element. And now the size of the array is 2. And append, keep appending elements. And then the size of the array changes. But the capacity keeps at 4. So what if now we want to append an extra element in the array? So here what we're going to do is we create a new array with size 8. And then we, cop we copy the elements in the first array into the new array. Now we have four available slots. So this new array, we will have a capacity of eight, and now the size is four. So we can now keep appending new elements into this dyna new dynamic array until the capacity is four. And after the capacity, after it reaches the capacity, we can now keep create a, another array with a larger capacity, and then we can append more elements into the array. So this is my Python implementation of dynamic array. I'll put a link to this script in the description of the video. As we can see, we create three variables when we initialize the object size, which means the actual length or the current length of the array, and the capacity, which is the maximum size we can have for the array. And this array variable is holding the actual array elements for our array. And this method we can use to get the length of the array, and this method is what we can use to get the array elements by indices. So this append method is the one we use to append new elements into our array. What it does is when our current array length reaches capacity, we're going to resize our current array to double the capacity. What the resize function does is it creates a new array with a new capacity and then it copies the elements in the old array into the new array. And lastly, it will use a new array to represent our current dynamic array. And this pop method is a method we use to pop the element 
from the end of the array. So what it does is it simply assign none to the last element of the array. Keep a note here. What we are doing here is if the current length of the array is less than a quarter of the capacity, we're going to resize our capacity to half of the current capacity. The reason for this logic is by, by resize to half of the capacity, we can, our array will consume less memories. For example, maybe after some append and pop operations, we will end up with an array of capacity 4 and the length 1. For example, although this array only have one element in it, it will use 4 memories. After this operation, we will end up with an array like this. So now this new dynamic array will only use two memories. Some people may ask, why we divide by 4 here instead of 2? Let's do another example. Let's say we have the array of capacity 2 and the size 1. So now this array will use two memories. Let's say if we divide by 2 here, and now after this logic, we're going to have an array of size 1 and capacity 1. So it uses one memory here. Isn't it better? So the downside of this is, what if we have another append operation after this? In the first case, if we have another append, we just append a new element into the array, which takes operation of order 1. And in the second case, we need to resize the array into a capacity of 2 and copy the element 1 into the new array and then do the append. So usually the resize operation, since it's copying the elements in the old array into the new array, is usually an order of n. So in, the, in this way, the following append will cost order of n. But the first method, the following append, will cost order of 1. And if we have append and a pop with equal probabilities, using the first method, which is divided by 4, will always have a better time complexity. So now let's analyze the time complexity for the array operations. For getting the array length, it's order of 1. And the, every access to the array element is also order of 1. The time complexity for append operation might be tricky. It has two cases. First case is when size is less than capacity. So in this case, we only need to assign the new value to the empty slot, which is order of 1. And the second case is the size, which is the capacity. In this case, we need to resize the array to double the capacity. And the resize operation takes order of n, because it has to copy every element in the old array into the new array. For n elements, it will be order n. However, after the resize operation, for all the n appends, it will always be order 1. So for n appends, after the resize operation, the total time, comple time complexity would be order of n, which is a resize, plus n of order 1s. which is n append operation. So the total time would be order of 2n. So on average, every append would be order of 2.
So which means for a pen operation, the amortized time complexity will be constant as well. So same for the pop operation. The amortized pop operation will be order one as well. So for the insert operation, the time complexity would be order of n. Let's take this as an example. To say we have an array with size 4 and capacity 8. And then we have values 1, 2, 3, 4 in there. Now let's say we want to insert an index 1 with a new value 0. What, what we're going to do is like we're going to shift the values after index 1 by one slot. So the 4 will be here, and the 3 will be here, and 2 will be here. And then we insert the value 0 into the first in, into this index 1. So the new array will be value with 1, 0, 2, 3, 4. And the time complexity for this operation would be the size of the array, which is order of n. And the same for delete at index, which is also order of n. And the space complexity for array is simple, it's always order of n. So this is the end of the video. Let me know your thoughts. And I'll see you in the next one.